How to remember the systemic circulatory system. Hi, I'm Hayley from Parallel Coaching and in this video we're going to explore how blood flow moves around the body and in particular how it serves our body's muscles, tissues, brain and our organs and that is going to be our systemic circulatory system. But before we go into the content of today's video what i would like to do is to let you know that you have three mock questions at the bottom of this blog just scroll the way to the bottom and you'll be able to see that you can test your knowledge on the content that we talk about today so let's now go on and understand exactly what we mean by circulatory system this is how we move blood around the body it's how nutrients get moved around oxygen gets moved around and also that we move around the waste products but instead of it just being one whole system, it's actually divided into three different parts. And this includes the coronary system, which is whereby it serves just the blood flow to the heart. So it's just to the heart muscle itself. Then you have the pulmonary circulatory system, and that one serves the lungs and allows us to take oxygenated blood into the heart to be moved around later and also removes carbon dioxide from the blood in the final parts of the pulmonary circulatory system. But the final one is the systemic circulatory system and that is what we're going to look at today. This is whereby we're moving blood around the body and we're able to take that ox rich oxygenated blood, move it into our body's tissues, muscles, brain, organs, and then we can get rid of the waste products that are therefore put back into the blood at that point and moved back to our heart, ready to be pumped into the pulmonary circulatory system. That's what we're going to look at today. So first of all, let's understand the sequence as we work our way through. And we're actually going to start at the left ventricle. Now this isn't the left as you look at it, it's the left of the person whose heart this is. So it may appear on the right hand side of your screen or right hand side of your page if you're looking at an image. But we're going for the left ventricle as the first starting point of our systemic circulatory system. Now here we've got oxygenated blood that's not long come from the pulmonary system. And at this point, the heart contracts and it sends the blood out through into the aorta. Now, the aorta is a thick artery. It's the thickest of all of them. It's about the thickness of your thumb. And that aorta then pushes that blood down under high amounts of pressure down into what we call arteries and then finally down into arterioles. Now these are basically getting smaller and smaller and smaller, much like how if you look at a tree, the tree trunk is thick, that's like the aorta, and then it branches down into a, a thick branch and then into thin branches and even thinner branches, resulting finally at the end with the leaves that have these small little capillaries, these little lines on the leaves. And we have those capillaries too, which lead into our muscles, which lead onto our tissues of our body, our organs, and to our brain. And actually that is the point whereby we're able to move that rich oxygenated blood across the barrier in the capillaries, right into the muscle cell or the cells that we require. So all of those nutrients can move into that cell. Then from here, the cell would have finished with its waste products that it's maybe used from energy production or any other means. And at that point, it moves into the blood and into the next set of capillaries. Now from here in the body where it's surrounded by the capillaries, we start to go back up towards the heart, which is what we call venous return. So we go from the capillaries, then we go to something called venules, then we go to something called veins, and then finally the vena cava and the vena cava returns it back to the right atrium. Now this is the full sequence of the systemic circulatory system. And as you can see, they move in a, a position whereby you've got oxygenated blood on one side as it moves from the heart, then it goes down into the muscles, the tissues of the body, the organs, and at that point, the blood doesn't, isn't oxygenated anymore, it's deoxygenated as it returns back to the heart. So you might mark this as red for oxygenated and blue for deoxygenated so that you can really clearly see the differences. Now that you understand those primary basics, let's understand and try and remember these in a different way. I mentioned earlier about how the branches of a tree kind of start off with a thick trunk and then they gradually get smaller and smaller. But notice that this happens on both sides of what we spoke about, both with the oxygenated and the deoxygenated blood. 
Now the thick part of this is going to be like the tree trunk, that's the aorta, and that is similar to what we have with the vena cava on the other side of our system. Then at the other side, we've then got the arteries, which are going to be the next tributary, the next branch off from our aorta. On the other side, we've got the veins, and then on the arterioles, the, the same as venules. So they actually pair. It's almost like our agonist antagonist in our body, our bicep and tricep. One relaxes, one works. They're pairs. But actually, these are the oxygenated version and the deoxygenated version of our systemic circulatory system and how they move around our body. So you can see that these are paired. And we actually go into this in a lot more detail in our Revision Mastery Bootcamp when we explore these different types of arteries and different types of veins and easy ways to remember how they're moving around the body and easy ways to see them on screen as well. Now that's everything you need to know about the systemic circulatory system. It just comes down to understanding where it starts, where it ends, and the function of each part of the systemic circulatory system. So I recommend that you take a moment to try and draw this out so you can really see how the blood flow moves from the heart, through all of our arteries, to our body, and then that's oxygenated blood, and then from our body, it then goes through our veins back to the heart. So it allows you chance to be able to make sense of it, simplify it and understand the structure. Remember, you can go down and check out those three mock questions to now test your knowledge on today's content. And also, if you are looking for more information on not just the heart and the circulatory system, but all parts of your level two or three anatomy and physiology, then please do check out our revision boot camps as these are gonna be linked in the show notes underneath. And this will allow you to be able to learn in a clear and confident way ready to pass your exam that brings me to the end of today thank you so much for watching and make sure you hit the little red button so you can subscribe to our youtube channel if you haven't already have a lovely day ahead take care